Start recording. You just press start. Oh yeah, you're gonna want to let this play out. Love this little intro. Oh yeah, I always let the intros to uh, um, RPGs play out. Is this your first uh, HD 2D game? Where they have like some 3D assets and everything, but it's still a lot of pixel art and everything like that, and, like well, pixel-based I mean, textures. You, there was. Uh, oh goodness. I mean, I've been playing video games since 1988. Mm -hmm. um, it started off with the whole Final Fantasy, you know, Mario, and then Final Fantasy, uh, Final Fantasy VII, Chrono Trigger. It's just a little bit of everything. Yeah, just, just look at that title screen. It's beautiful. So yeah, I think, I think part of the reason why you can just start a new game. Well, uh, maybe you want to check the settings. See what the settings were like. I think you have to press A, yeah. Which, are you pressing A or B? I'm pressing B. Okay. All right. Yeah, Nintendo's okay. weird with that. Game settings. It's been a while since I've actually played a Nintendo version. Uh, game. Yeah, it should be fine. Huh. So yeah, we, we originally, I think, we were, I think the whole idea for this channel is we originally were talking about, uh, JRPGs in general. I think one of the first ones we talked about was FF15, and part of that was my disdain for it. Your disdain, uh, my love for the graphics. Yeah, I mean, the production value's there. It's a good game. So, uh, so like I said, the, the director that made Chrono Trigger, he made this before. Mm -hmm. uh, this game was originally Japanese exclusive. Uh, and much like Chrono Trigger, it deals with time, but this one is segregated time periods. That have a through line, mm -hmm. whereas Chrono Trigger is literally time travel as such. Um, now you can choose any chapter you want. Um, a lot of them play very atypical. Some of them do not play like standard JRPGs, uh, and some are very much like JRPGs. I would say Pogo. This is Pogo in prehistory. Probably the closest you get to just the standard JRP experience. Mm -hmm. So if you'd want to start here, now I, I played them like in I guess you'd say a chronological time point so I started with Pogo and the last character is that weird white ball looking thing in the back which is really? like the distant future yeah, yeah I forget his name um I will tell you how each section plays um they're all I would say unique in their own regard but um I instantly fell in love with this game I love the art style I love all the stories love the character designs because here you got a caveman uh, next to him is a cowboy. Then you have a Japanese teenager, <laughs> anime protagonist. You mm -hmm. go, you know, weird android-looking thing, uh, a ninja, uh, a martial arts like kung fu master, and then just a, a good old American brawler, a little American pugilist, little street fighter. You know, and it's like, I don't know. Just I just love this game. I loved it the whole way through. Um, I don't know if you love it as much as me, but I think it's a very unique experience. I'm very happy Square Enix decided to just remake it because if you if you ever look what the original looks like it's it's uh, i would say the graphics are pretty antiquated by this point in time gotcha. um but it's like yeah just seeing like when, the, the more you play it it's it's just so evident that the guy who directed chrono trigger made it okay. like it's just it, there's such a, a parallel between it and god chrono trigger one day we need to play that for sure. Oh, yeah. Especially, like I said, I have the PS1 version on PS3, so we watched those sick Akira Toriyama uh, anime cutscenes that him and his studio made. Oh, yes. Um, but for now, we're playing Live Alive. So that's how you say that title. It's a weird title, but I love it. So, yeah, I, I started the Pogo. You don't have to, but like I said, if you are if you want to start here just to ease in, and then, like I said, I can be your guide for the other chapters. So, I uh, actually agree with that. You know, you... You kind of for me i want to start from the beginning yeah and you know as everyone's seen when you're you know if you come into this this part of the screen it just spins that you get to choose whichever one and yeah i, I don't know that's hmm because i mean even with chrono trigger you started off in you know, present day, then you went back to um, 
500 years into the past and then back forward and then prehistoric and then the distant future and then the end of time back to the you know present yeah there was i can't remember all the time points it was like yeah prehistoric uh like the middle ages or something mm-hmm then there Which was is where time, you travel first. Yeah, and there's the, t- the time. Oh, I think there's there's a time period before prehistoric in between Middle Ages with the Kingdom of Zeal. Uh, oh, know, that's Chrono Trigger spoilers. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that later. But anyways, Chrono Trigger time, time travel. But yeah, that one I guess because it was a way more straightforward JRPG just in terms of combat. Uh, obviously, it, it got its port here to the West or localized for the West, and then yeah. rest is history. Um, but yeah. All right, let's get this going. Start with Pogo? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they all have little blips, but we can wait to read those whenever you're actually playing. Um, did you already read the blip? In a forgotten era before kings and kingdoms, a young man comes of age and is given permission by his tribe's stern elder to go forth and hunt. Together with his best friend, Gori, bereft of spoken words, they rely on their senses to survive. In particular, a powerful sense of smell. Guided by their noses, they track game and find shelter, and learn much of the world and its dangers. There's a smell mechanic for sure. <laughs> nice. Y- you'll see, it's not too complicated. Oh, that's as much as he likes says, too. <laughs> and this being my first time playing this, is probably going to be... A little more of me reading and learning oh, the yeah. mechanics of the game. Oh yeah, we got to do the full story here. So we have a angry chief. They're looking for somebody. He's very mad. And this is this is a different tribe. This is not your tribe. Oh, they're looking for a little honey. He's like, yo, where Shorty at? Bring that ass here, boy. That's not what they want to sound like. I'm sorry. <laughs> would have been like, ugh. Ugh. Look at that. Look at that. It's all those 3D assets and everything. That really just nice, high quality pixel art, you know? Yeah. I think it looks great. A lot of people are like, mm, ancient 2D. I think the first game that Square Enix did in this style was uh, Octopath Traveler. I haven't played it yet. I've heard very good things. I haven't played it yet. Very boring title, though. Mm-hmm. Octopath Traveler. And there's Triangle Strategy, another game they made. <sighs> All right, so so Shouty, she escaped. <laughs> They're looking for her. Sure. <laughs> she, <laughs> the whole boy's like, "What's up, man? Better knock if you buck." These are the worst callbacks. I'm sorry. And they get cars, even in prehistoric times. Well, it's foot powered, you know. Oh, like Fred yeah, Flintstone. Yeah. See, you see the little holes to the bottom. Gotcha. I don't know if they're all attached together or not, or what. Oh, I guess they're not. And they're gonna run the guy over. Nope. Okay. Sure. Sure. Okay. This, this guy's just got no luck. I would just stay home. I'm not going to fall after them. It's like, fuck, y'all left me, bro. Right? Got them Lamborghinis, bro. Them Chevrolet legs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the implication that, like, Ever since the beginning of time, one of the first instruments mankind's ever invented is just like a drum, you know? Like, that's just our instinct is just smack something and oh, enjoy yeah. the sound that comes out. Oh, there's your buddy, Gory. He's an ape. An ape man. Mm-hmm. The, the evolution, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's your uh, great uncle, twice removed on your mom's side. Nice. I don't know if that's true. I don't know. <laughs> 
I'm just, basing, I'm just basing this off of the theory of evolution. That one, not the the movie Ooh. starring the same actor that played Mulder on X Files. Fuck, I can't remember his name. Maybe that'll be the next one. X Files was just reserved. That fucking T Rex, man. God, this game looks so good. Yes, it does. So yeah, Pogo, now you be advised the names cannot be changed. You can change it, but once, I think. Or can you not? Uh, I think I'll leave it. The same. Yeah, just leave it. Yeah, just press start. It, it, it always pulls this up. Yeah. See, I'm the same way. I've never changed anybody's name in a GRPG. I don't know why that was ever a thing. I mean, maybe it made more sense when... I guess you have the silent protagonist that really doesn't say anything, and you are imprinting yourself on them more. But mm -hmm. it's like, I don't know, uh, like, especially I guess you could say, I don't know, even I would say what FF four or five when they started actually having like each of the cast are more unique characters. It's like don't change their names. That's a person, you know, yeah. like that is an actual character. Yeah. So <clears throat> you get a little mini map, you get a little radar, radar located at the bottom right. Uh, so you have the gray, which is unexplored area, uh, route to explored area, it's blue, and then uh, if it's orange, that's your current objective, and then uh, you'll see a flag, yeah, when you're actually in the room with your objective, and then you can toggle it on or off. I, I just leave it on. <coughs> Where the fuck that come from? Ow. All right. All right. Uh, so... You Wake up Gory. Pop a little snot bubble. Now, was it a snot bubble or was it a dream bubble? You know what? It's up in the air. I mean, it's a dream bubble, but you know. So you have a stick. Nice. I think there's a crafting section in this game, if I remember. So if you get different materials you can craft, stuff like knives, like just weapons and everything like that. And you got this asshole blocking your way. Yeah, you're late for a very important date. So if you're like me, you're gonna explore all the non-required areas first. Oh yeah, you gotta make sure you, you get the most powerful stuff you can. Oh, see, I'd have missed the pelt. And another stick. And a hard rock. Is this where you play the haystack game? You talk to that guy. Oog. Hey. Ah, okay, so this is a haystack game. Okay, so he wants to know which haystack is gonna have more dudes in it. Which I think my I think it's left. Oh yeah. Another stick. Yeah, you get a lot and of materials. A bone. Yeah, you can just do this a bunch of times because, like I said, there is a crafting section, and you might end up having to make a lot of stuff for better weapons and equipment mm -hmm. and everything. There's also so some of the sections do have secret bosses. Um, one I'll explain more in detail later when you're actually in that section. This one is just uh, you're you you'll just end up having a grind. Uh, Okay, so he wants the most. If it's if it he if he points to five, he wants which one has the most. I'm I'm feeling right. I don't know how sure that is. I'm like eighty percent sure it's right. Honestly, it looked like it was even. Yeah, but I'll go with you. I'll go with you on that. So if he points to five, he wants which haystack has the most. If he points to three, which one is has the least? And if he ends up pointing at one that shows the gorilla, ah, uh, oh, just by one. Damn it! Fuck you, caveman. Ugh. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but if he points to one that has gory, then he wants you to uh, tell him which one has gory in it gotcha. and everything. Uh, but yeah, we can always. I mean, at some point, I think we can't keep playing this game. I want to say for at least a good portion of the section, we can come back and do that in case you need the materials. Um, do they give you anything? Oh, there's that thing behind them. Just punch you guys? So it seemed like. Fucking go take their shit. Oh, yeah. Another bone. And another stick. That's right, get out of my way. I think you also get more materials when you fight other... Cavemen. Uh, well, just enemies in general. And then there will be other... Uh, big old slab of meat. Don't fuck with the meat, son. He's gonna yell at you if you try to touch his meat. I mean, I'd yell at you if you were trying to touch my meat, too. Well, yeah. You know? Ooh, mystery. Question mark. I don't think there's anything to interact in those yet. Um, so yeah, you'll have more opportunities to craft outside the village, which I think might be in the bottom left area, or yeah, bottom left. Oh, that's the village elder. You can check there, yeah, and you can go back to the item crafting guy if you want to. Yeah, you can't go out there yet. All right, then I'm just gonna go away from you. How's that? <laughs> can't go out there yet. Cause you're not a man yet. You gotta talk to the elder. Pass that test. So yeah, uh, do you even have a hard rock? You do have a hard rock. Mm -hmm. So if you combine bone with hard rock, you'll get a stone knife. And then with the stone knife, leather strap. Okay, so you need to make, you even have a belt, okay. So you'll need to make a stone knife first, which is that, and then combine it with the pelt to make a leather strap. And then uh, you'll need to make another stone knife. So. Take that and then, yeah. Uh, left. Okay, so take pelt and the stone knife, and you'll get a leather strap. The crafting can be complicated, so I'll, I'll give you hints for that because it's I'm not gonna have you sit here trying to like add everything together and be like, oh, this is useful now. Okay. So you lost your stone knife, now you have a leather strap, so now you make another stone knife with your other hard rock and bone. Then you can combine that stone knife and the leather strap together and you get the fury knife, which is a pretty strong weapon. And so start the section. Bone. bone and hard rock. Another like I said, if you need more materials, I'm pretty sure you can go back and just do that get the, the haystack game again and mm -hmm. just grind that out. <laughs> Now I need the stone knife and the leather strap. Fury knife. 
And I think... Oh, if you click uh, right, it means you're done crafting. Gotcha. <clears throat> Let me check what else is here. I don't think you make too much stuff right now. Yeah, later on, if you get a beast horn and hard rock, there's a strong axe, but... Uh, um, oh, you have dried skins? What do the dried skins do? Dried skins plus... Beast Fang is a... Well, if you make another stone knife, which you don't have the materials for, but if you combine that and dried skins, you get the Laughing Mask, which I believe is a piece of armor you can attach. So you can't make that if you want. <clears throat> yeah, so you got a piece of... A helmet. And right now, I, I wouldn't waste the rest of your item crafting. You're only going to get like really weak weapons or useless accessories right now. So I think if you press start, you're going to go into your menu and equip all that stuff. Fire. Or is it Y? Y or X? There we go. <clears throat> Gory's four levels over here. You can swap out the bone. It's up to 30, man. You were running around the bone. There's only five attack damage. Oh yeah, the beast horn can also be equipped and whatever, but you can use, what's the laughing mask at? Uh, that's way better, special attack and defense? Yeah. I think the beast horn can be thrown on, check uh, the fist one? Okay, what about the accessories? Oh yeah, you can throw a pelt on too for more defense. Just shits and giggles. Click on that. Nothing? No? no. Alright, go over to Gory then. You add anything on him? Nothing. Alright, fuck him. Alright, I guess just go talk to the Elder now. Alright. Now, I will say, if you do want to defeat that secret boss, um, you, you will need some grinding. I think I had to grind up to like level 16 and mm -hmm. everything. You don't get that high in levels uh, in individual character sections. Um. Some you'll be higher than others, like 16, 17 by the end of it, and some you'll be barely 10, so. Um, <clears throat> now, the secret boss, I beat the secret boss because they drop a special item, which I think you have to equip to, I think you have to equip it to Pogo before beating the section. Um, okay, so basically, I don't wanna give too many spoilers, but there is a chapter that unlocks once you beat everybody's sections. Gotcha. And then, essentially, everybody comes together. And so your party is now made up of all the main people from each individual section. Mm -hmm. And so I'm pretty sure for all the really good gear you want to carry over uh, in into that final section, you have to make sure it's most definitely equipped. And it sucks, because uh, it's like, you, you'd want to use it. Uh, uh, the special item you get in this section, you'd want to use it. Because I'm pretty sure it does like max damage, like available. Like I think it's like nine nine nine. Like every attack they use it. Uh, all I remember, all, all I know is that in the original game, that's what happened. So if you didn't have it equipped by the time you beat, if you didn't have any certain items equipped by the time you beat the section, you lost those items. I think they may have fixed it, but at the same time, I wouldn't want to risk it. Yeah. So yeah, here's how you learn. Hey, you sniff mechanic. See a dust cloud, fight it, get some shmeat. Yeah, I think you just gotta squeeze past him. Or do you talk to him? Do, do you talk to the elder? <laughs> oh, he's gonna just show you the same shit again. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can press Z or skip that. I think it's the top mm -hmm. shoulder button. Yeah, there we go. Talk to the elder. Maybe he'll let you pass. Oh, okay, there we go. Press your Y button. 
use that extraordinary sense of smell. Can you smell what the rock is cooking? You know what the rock's cooking? Uh, a failed DCEU fucking shit. You see that stuff? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here's how this system works. It is grid. It is not, I mean, it is turn-based, but you are moving around on a grid. Um, and depending on the moves you have accessible, influences it. Um, I would say this is a pretty decent blend between traditional turn-based uh, gameplay from classic JRPGs and then strategy based rpgs like ff tactics uh front mission 3 such as that um yes yeah, so you get your charge gauge appear above allies and enemies that are readying actions so essentially atb whatever you're used to it um controlling allies in battle you may choose one of several commands abilities items pass wait flee standard mm -hmm. um when selecting abilities and items for use their effect will be displayed use this guide to ensure your intended targets will be affected so obviously if you're using an attack and an enemy's not within the highlighted area, or yeah, if you're using the ability, not gonna work. Gotcha. They're using pictures from uh, the ninja guy. Uh, when an ally's HP is reduced to zero, they will no longer be able to fight. Restoring any amount of HP will put them back in action. If you warned if allies are incapacitated, the game will end. So I think what happens is, if I remember correctly, I could be wrong. It's been a minute since I played it. I played it very early, like I, I played this, as soon as it came out, beginning the, as soon as it came out during the beginning of the year, Jesus, I need to slow down and enunciate. <laughs> so yes, they'll still be in the fight. Um, if you restore their health, they'll come back. But I think if their body gets attacked while they're in that incapacitated state, then they'll be permanently downed. Gotcha. Um, and you can bring them back. And then what's the last one? Dismissal. Yeah. If an ally is, yeah, exactly. If their damage pass, they're already weakened. Bar, Dunskies. So I was right. Haha. -ha. All right. So what's your abilities? Oh, so as you move, so that's another thing is while you're moving, you'll notice their charge bar. So he's about to kick your ass. So his charge bar is increasing and your allies charge bar is increasing. So sometimes in a strategy situation, um, hit one bat with ax. Um, if like you're worried about an enemy attacking you so once you start like memorizing certain enemies attack patterns and such thanks slap yeah um if you like if you know that they need to be within a certain distance of you to attack you and you need availability like you need to wait to charge and you need room to breathe like you can essentially avoid their attack because you're essentially outrunning them mm -hmm. while they're following you across the grid and by the time your charge uh, meters up, hey, you can go do an attack. So I think you have to collect a certain amount of meat. Not sure how much, maybe like three or four. I don't know. Oh yeah, you gotta use your sniff -o meter It was a little kind of sickly uh, deer the first time. Oh yeah, a little trihorn doe. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's four feral pups. I'll probably just see what attacks you have, yeah. So go ahead and smash that dog. I don't know what the fuck he said. Bang slap. God, look at those graphics. I, I don't know. See, the, the FF games... Uh, from like 1 through 6 have gotten the, the pixel remasters, which mm -hmm. I believe are on Steam. Kind of costly too. Yeah. I'm watching those and I'm like, hmm, don't like that this much. Um, also, you don't have to be like right face to face with an enemy. You can be diagonal and stuff. I'm only saying that because you're, you're moving to get like right next to them and it's also making their charge meter grow up. Yeah. So like that's something you have to get used to is like uh it also helps to know that the characters range i think all of their attacks so far are close range but just in the future it's like oh i don't have to be up in the enemy's face to do this attack so that way i can keep a safe distance while doing damage to them um i wouldn't mind seeing a uh maybe if they didn't do a remake but if they made a if they had a smaller team and do like a final fantasy 
side story with this type of uh, aesthetic, I think it would look really good. Yeah. Um, and mostly because I think my first time playing a Final Fantasy game was the port uh, for the Game Boy Advance they did of six, and I loved it so much. Oh, that's no, yeah, the smell is just telling you the elders nearby. You gotta go more south to the giant T Rex. The giant T Rex uh, skeleton also reminds me of Parasite Eve, which I also wanna play. <laughs> but it's also a shorter, you know, weird GRPG, so maybe one day. Found yourself a whole rock. Alright, let's go beat the shit out of that deer. And for some reason, it pushed it all the way down here. <laughs> oh yeah, there's also uh, the scare face. Threaten you. What's up, ape boy? 